The first topical issue is uh, proposed by Deputy Patrick Tobin. It's to the Minister for Health on the need to provide better funding to the ambulance service in the North East. The Deputy's four minutes to make an initial statement. The Minister has four minutes to reply. Just keep an eye on the time clocks. Thank you. Uh, I'm raising the issue of the ambulances in County Meath again, um, and I think they're representative of other parts of the country as well. Four ambulances served Meath a number of years ago. In 2010, this was down to three ambulances. Uh, this year, it was reduced to two ambulances on two separate occasions, on two days of the week, a Tuesday and a Friday. And due to significant rostering problems and the lack of overtime, it is there's only one ambulance available in the whole county of Meath. Now, this is happening uh, at a time where significant pressure is uh, upon uh, the ambulances. No longer can they go to the local hospital because the local hospital has usually a service reduction and has to be bypassed. Also significantly, the call centre for ambulances in, in the North East is now in Dublin uh, and not locally. Now, two weeks ago, a woman in Navan, living five minutes from the hospital, had a serious stroke. It took 40 minutes for an ambulance to come from Drogheda to arrive at her house and bring her to the hospital in Navan. At the start of the year, an infant uh, tragically died and the family had to wait an extended period of time for an ambulance to arrive. There was a fatal road traffic accident in the south of the county recently. An ambulance had to come from RD, County Louth. Another serious non-fatal road accident in the bad roads of the southwest of the county and an ambulance from RD had to uh, arrive. A recent cardiac arrest uh, in the south of the county waited 45 minutes uh, for an ambulance to arrive. Two weeks ago in Navan, an eight-year-old girl was pinned down by an industrial-sized gate 50 minutes for an ambulance to arrive. Ambulances are, are coming from Mullingar, Port Leash, etc., to service Meath. And on occasion, ambulances are travelling from County Down into County Louth, and the nearest available ambulance for Dundalk can be in Navan. In recent times, a Garda had to be asked to drive an ambulance in the county because there was only one ambulance personnel available for that particular ambulance. Now, this information is coming from me from ambulance personnel, from fire service personnel, and from patients. But these guys are actually living in a culture of fear and silence at the moment, and they feel afraid even to discuss these service breakdowns with their local TD, which, in my view, should be a constitutional right of any citizen. Now, I asked in a PQ a number of months ago, Minister, for you to investigate these issues before any further change would be carried out uh, to the region. I also asked for the key performance indicators for Meath and the North East region. Minister, your letter to me referred me on to HICWA and uh, to the HSE. HICWA didn't perform, uh, provide me with these key performance indicators because, believe it or not, HICWA does not have key performance indicators for the ambulance service on a regional basis. One minute. And anybody who knows anything about management will understand that you cannot manage if you cannot measure. And if the HSC minister, if HICWA, or even yourself, or your department, do not have the measurements for the key performance indicators for the ambulance service in the northeast, never mind our own county, under these cuts. How in God's name, Minister, are you able to manage uh, the provision of services, this critical frontline emergency service to the people of the county? Um, Twelve days ago, I sent a, a, an email to the National Ambulance Service with regard to looking for the p key performance indicators for the region and for the county. And I contacted them today. They hadn't acknowledged the letter. They hadn't begun to seek the information uh, sought in the letter itself. Um, Minister, will you provide the key performance indicators for the region to the House? Thank you, Deputy. Minister, four minutes. Thank you very much. First, I'd like to thank the Deputy for raising this issue. And can I say a significant reform programme has been underway in pre-hospital emergency services in recent years. And this is to ensure that the best clinical care is provided for the people in each region that the National Ambulance Service serves through provision of a clinically driven, nationally coordinated system supported by improved technology. The programme includes a performance improvement action plan, development of the intermediate care service, the emergency aeromedical support service and the national 
Ambulance Service Control Centre reconfiguration project. In particular, following discussions between the National Ambulance Service and unions, changes have been implemented in rosters in a large number of ambulance stations around the country, including all stations in the former North East area from whence the deputy comes. As a consequence of these new rostering arrangements, additional cover will be provided in a number of ambulance stations based on both discussions with staff and activity and demand analysis. The introduction of new rostering arrangements will progress a number of efficiencies arising from a Labour Court recommendation to address excessive overtime in its rostering arrangements and requires the full cooperation of all staff. The National Ambulance Service has completed an individual and collective consultation process with staff at each station in Loud, Mead, Cavan and Monaghan. Staff, through their trade unions, SIP2 and UNITE, have agreed to implement the new rosters. While there have been some concerns raised by staff and public representatives over claims of reduced cover, the National Ambulance Service has advised that this is not the case. In Louth, Mead, Cavan and Monaghan, the new rosters introduced earlier this year will see an increase in cover of 188 rostered hours a week. 188 rostered hours a week, or approximately 9,800 extra rostered hours a year. That's nearly 10,000 extra rostered hours per year. As well as the additional hours, the National Ambulance Service has introduced two rapid response vehicles, NRD and TRIM, to further augment services. Also, as services are provided regionally rather than from single stations, where necessary, ambulances from adjacent stations provide cover in a dynamic manner by moving to areas as and where cover is required. The National Ambulance Service has introduced more resources in tandem with reorganisation of acute services in the Loudoun Mead area. Extended analysis has identified that demand is in inter-hospital transfers, which have traditionally used emergency ambulances. In the former North East, this service is operating from Cavan, Casa Blaney, and Dundalk ambulance stations. The National Ambulance Service has also implemented additional intermediate care capacity in Louth. The ongoing introduction of intermediate care <laughs> services allows the release of existing emergency ambulance resources back to emergency uses. These and other changes being implemented at local, regional and national levels will continue to move the ambulance service in the right direction. A national service providing the best clinical care for the needs of the people in each region it serves. Emergency, resource, emergency resources and staff are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, ensuring that the people of the North East have timely access to highly skilled paramedic and advanced paramedic staff day or night. Thank you, Minister. Deputy, two minutes for supplementaries. Keep an eye on the clock, please. Kurt Margus, um, I feel, Minister, as we're having a disjointed conversation to a certain extent. Um, there's no doubt that um, there's need for efficiencies with regards to resources, and I am for efficiencies uh, in any manner that they can be procured, as long as they don't have a negative effect with regards to the experience of the patient. Um, I have requested from yourself, from HICWA, from the National Ambulance Service, and on previous occasions, and again today from yourself, from key performance indicators to show what the response time for the ambulance service is to life and death emergency situations amongst the citizens of the North East. And I ask again, will you provide those to the House uh, 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 ASAP? Um, and also, it's, it's very important to note that I provide you with key performance indicators of actual patients, citizens who have come to me showing that the performance of the service is outside of the HICWA guidelines. Even occasions, you, you mentioned the trim, in, in trim there's a rapid response unit. There is a HICWA guideline uh, that says that the, uh, there should be treatment available to a Echo Delta patient within eight minutes, but there needs to be an ambulance to transport the patients to a hospital uh, in 18 minutes. And even in those situations, 
the National Ambulance Service in the North East are not achieving those uh, performance indicators. Um, the views of the National Ambulance Service and the staff are polar opposites. You could not consume two more divergent uh, analysis of the situation in the region. And I believe the only way we could talk about uh, who says this and who says that, the only way to clearly cut through this, and in actual fact to um, uh, enable you to manage the uh, funding of the region better, is for key performance indicators for the location to be provided. Will you, Minister, provide those? Thanks, Deputy Minister. Two minutes. Thank you very much. I'd just like to emphasise that the new rostering arrangements have you know, resulted in increased hours of 188 hours each week and of 9,800 hours a year. Now, there have been problems in the ambulance service, as there has always been. And there is an issue around a relatively high absenteeism rate rather than a lack of vehicle resources. And that's according to the note I have here. This absenteeism is being addressed by the National Ambulance Service Management. However, unforeseen and short notice absence presents challenges for emergency provisions which are dealt with through regional resource utilisation and deployment and call prioritisation. I know there was a recent report of a guard driving an ambulance. This might occur for a number of reasons, including a clinical situation where both attending crew are providing patient care, and guardi are authorised to drive any vehicle deemed necessary in the performance of their duties. And I think we'd all agree that such collaborative arrangements are necessary, where all our agencies at the scene of an incident are focused on a common goal and mission to preserve life. So, whilst nobody wants to hear of some of the situations which the Deputy has described, I want to assure the House that the new arrangements have actually increased the number of hours available to give this life-saving service. There will always be room for improvement and we shall continue to strive to do that. And in relation to the key performance indicators, I shall certainly discuss that with Hikla and I'll revert to the Deputy in due course. Thanks. Thanks very much, Minister.